In this video trade, we're gonna look at seven psychological traps that each trader must face. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so psychological traps that we are all going to face at some point. If you haven't yet already, you will do, but you probably have, you just don't know what they are. So let's have a look at them, we've got seven for you. Let's start with the first one. The first one is exposure bias. What is exposure bias? Exposure bias is you form an opinion without checking the facts. So you're bombarded with all this information about a specific market, specific stock, blah, 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 whatever it is. So you're forming an opinion without checking things for yourself. You might have a massive amount of bullish exposure to a specific market, when in reality, you need to check the facts for yourself. You're exposed too much to one side of the coin. And actually talking about coin, that could be pretty relevant to cryptos when a lot of people were very, very bullish on cryptos, disregarding the kind of price and saying, okay, well, let's put these two decisions separate. Is this cryptocurrency going to be worthwhile long-term versus the valuation of it now? Two distinct arguments. You're often there getting blended together and people were getting confirmation, I'm sorry, exposure bias after that. They weren't checking the facts. They weren't looking for themselves through their own lenses. All right, number two, confirmation bias. That's when you make a decision first and you rationalize it after. So you're basically looking at something, you make a decision, and then you look for things to kind of back up that decision, to rationalize your decision, as opposed to looking at it, rationalizing, coming up with a neutral decision based on what you see. Confirmation bias is that snap decision, and then finding things that back up and support the decision you've made the wrong way around. All right, trend chasing. As human beings, we tend to extrapolate things too much into the future. Now, something I talk about a lot is extrapolating things in charts and what have you, but often people will say, hey, this thing's moved $10 in the last month. It's gonna move at least another $10 next month. That's a danger. That's why many people chase and many traders chase stuff because they just believe this thing's gonna go on forever. Sure, the old adage of your trend is your friend until the bend at the end is true and trends do last for a long, long time. However, you do have to be careful you're not overextending things and not looking at things through some clarity. So be careful not about trend chasing. All right, number four, guys, overconfidence. And that means not necessarily overconfidence in your own ability, but overconfidence in your ability for that individual individual trade. So you're putting too much weight on that individual trade's success. You think, I've picked a great stock here, I picked a great trade, it's gonna work. But reality is, it doesn't matter how good that specific trade setup may be, there is still an element of luck involved in each of the individual trade. It's a probability game throughout a longer cycle of trade exposure. So be careful of overconfidence. Right, what have we got in number five, guys? Loss aversion. So loss aversion is a quite a common one with traders, believe it or not, and it's doing whatever you need to do to avoid a loss. I just got to get back to break even. I just want to make sure I make money today. I just want to make sure, you know, and it's avoiding the loss as opposed to trading for actual the best gains possible. A good example is going to be, hey, bringing a stop up to break even because you want to avoid a loss. In reality, you probably need to give this thing a little bit more room. It's hardly even gone your direction. And the quicker you're pulling up to break even, the more likely is you're going to get whacked on a little bit of a pullback. So you need to think in terms of doing the right thing for the trade and not just focused on the loss because all you're doing is you're imprinting your trade entry or your account balance metrics on the market. The market doesn't care, the market's got its own agenda to to conform to. Right, number six guys, paradox of choice. This is a really important one, okay? They're all good, but this is an important one. We have so much choice. We can trade multiple markets. We can trade multiple time frames. We can trade multiple strategies. There is just an inf- almost infinite amount of choices. Think of all the permutations of choices we've got. When you think of the markets, the time frames, the strategies, etc., it's ridiculous. And people think that's a good thing, it's not. Paradox of choice, too much choice. Market styles is a bad thing. As traders, we must narrow ourselves down. We must become specialists, whether that is a specialist in a setup, whether that is a specialist in a specific market. Narrow your focus down. At least start off by just getting rid of stuff you know you're not gonna touch. Bring that bring that final right in until you're so aligned with one or two things, it's almost painful. Some of the best traders I know were so focused on one or two markets 
instruments, stocks. They knew them like the back of their hand and they made money on them. The guys who were trying to do everything very, very rarely made money. So paradox of choice, make sure you're bringing those boundaries in. Okay, popular prescription bias, doing the done thing. We all hear these sound bites running around, cut your losses, run your winners, the trend is, trend is your friend and all this kind of stuff. Listen, I say them, but the point is, you need to know what their meaning when they're being said, what the true meaning behind them is. You know, just when you're hearing it say, I've got to cut my losses, got to cut my losses, I'm hearing this, and that's the kind of done thing, it's the popular prescription that traders say, cut your losses. It doesn't mean just cut your loss as soon as it goes into loss, it means, hey, don't let a loss get too far away from you. Make sure the loss doesn't damage you too much. You are gonna to have to sit through drawdown. You are gonna to have to sit through trades that go against you. Definitely run your winners. Doesn't mean hold things forever. It means run it for as long as you think you can for that market condition. Doesn't mean expect 500 pips from a daily range when a thing normally moves 50. You know, you've got to kind of put things into perspective. And yeah, these sound bites go around all the time. We talk about them in trading and even like the top traders say them, but they say them for a reason. And we've got to be careful we don't just go, oh yeah, it's a popular thing to say, let's implement it to our trading without really working out what the truly true meaning behind it is. Okay guys, so there's seven psychological traps that each trader must face. I'm sure if you've been trading for a while, you've definitely faced 50% or more of those. If you haven't, you will do. So keep an eye out for those because they can be damaging to your account. But the good news is, is that if you're aware of them, you can second guess yourself and say, hey, you know what, actually, I think I might have a bit of confirmation bias on this one. I think I'm a little bit too overconfident on this trade. I recognize that. I'll step back and take the appropriate action. Whatever you do, guys, keep the risk managed. Good luck in your trading. Give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Much appreciated. Thank you for your support. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.